we can correlate stature to any long bone in the body. So I can measure the length of a long bone and it correlates to your stature, some better than others. So the best stature estimation uh, bone is the femur, which is this upper leg bone. The second best is the humerus, which is your upper arm bone. Really? Yeah, so this is very much correlated to your stature. So that's one of the ways I estimate how tall someone was in life. Also, I've got all of his lower back vertebrae here, and we can look at some degenerative changes in his, in his spinal column, which gives us an indication that he's a little older as opposed to a little younger, that type of a thing. Uh, so I can make certain estimations on his age, whether or not it's male or female, how tall he was, if there's any trauma or pathology, uh, to his bones, maybe a healed fracture that he survived, things like that. So, skeletal remains are fascinating. And if you think about it, I mean, there it's an elegant tissue, and that's one of the reasons why I am so passionate about this. We think of bones in our bodies as just this scaffolding, kind of like a just a, just a framework if you will, but this is living tissue in our bodies. It regenerates, it gets nourishment, it provides minerals to the rest of our body. It's really a dynamic type of tissue. And how amazing is it that it sticks around for us to study after all the soft tissue is gone? It really is uh, an amazing portion of the human body. With a skeletal remains case, we are immediately working at a deficit. We don't have an eye color or a hair color, or the way somebody walked, or their gait, or the way their voice sounded. This is what we have. But as an anthropologist, this is enough for me to give investigators the tools they need to find out who this is.